Greetings, citizens of Nindy Nation, and thanks for tuning in to a very special episode of the Nindy Nation podcast. Today, August 19th, 2019, out of Gamescom, Nintendo has just dropped their first named Indie World. I guess it's like a Nindy Direct or Indie Game Presentation or something like that. I wish Nintendo could get their naming conventions straight because we kind of made a podcast out of the Nindy moniker, but nonetheless, I'm Jeff, and today we're going to walk through the 29 games that Nintendo talked about during today's Indie World presentation. So let's get right into it. First of all, by Gearbox, Risk of Rain 2, the sequel to last year's fantastic, procedurally generated Metroidvania roguelike style game about exploring a desolate planet, finding all kinds of new abilities and weapons, and trying to make it out the other side across hundreds of attempts. This game looks fantastic. It now adds two-player co-op, and it is dropping summer. It's interesting that they say summer 2019 when we've really only got a couple weeks left, isn't it? Following that, developed by Chucklefish, who's brought us games like Stardew Valley, we have Eastward, which is launching sometime next year. It's a 16-bit graphic novel style action RPG that has a fantastic soundtrack. It's about two characters. The main protagonist is in an underground research facility and you find this young girl and so there's this air of mystery about what's up with the girl and who's chasing her and can you get through the world together and bring her to her salvation and uh, it looks like a great title. Chucklefish has also brought us uh, Wargroove earlier this year and so they have a really good pedigree. Following that we got to see Freedom Finger by Wide Right Interactive launching this fall. This game looks hilarious. It looks like you're watching a Adult Swim cartoon. It's got kind of a gross style of art to it, but it looks gorgeous. It's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up or shmup, and it, <laughs> you're basically a finger, a hand and a finger that is pew-pewing your way through all of these music-driven levels with lots of punk and metal type music and your power-ups are basically the finger going into different gloves or holding enemies or things like that so if you're a fan of shmups this one looks really fun and uh, we won't have to wait long until it launches this fall to play it then by United Label Games, a developer I haven't heard much about, we got Roki. This game is launching this winter. It is a dreamlike, almost rotoscoped type of visual style. Think back to some of those 16-bit games like Out of This World or Flashback. It has a really dark purple, black, dark green uh, visual style, and you are, it looks like it's a mix of 2D and 3D puzzle, platforming, exploration, adventure. You can make friends with different creatures out in the wilderness to help you traverse through this fairy tale-like world to find out if you are the monster or if you are the hero. And then, oh, I'm so excited, coming out in just a couple of weeks on September 3rd by Runic Games, we get Torchlight 2. And guys, if you are looking for a really fun hack and slash RPG, something to cure that Diablo-like itch, Torchlight is so much fun. I played the original back on the Xbox 360, and this game's been sitting in my Steam queue for a long time. I need to run back through it, but not anymore. Now supporting two-player co-op coming to the Switch on September 3rd. It is just tons. There is tons of content in this game, and it is definitely one to keep your eye on and pick up the day it launches. And then a big surprise also by a new studio, Easy Day Studios, coming out next year sometime, is Skater XL. This might be the, the answer to everybody who's crying for a new Tony Hawk or a new skate. It's, of course, a skateboarding game, but the thing that they do differently is they say all of the tricks are truly 
physics based and you can see it in the trailer as you're doing tricks you have more control over the board it's not just simple button presses but you also have to work on landing the tricks and where your feet and the board are placed in relation to each other and so you can see every single trick looks just a little bit different and so, you know, it remains to be seen how this plays. I don't want it to end up playing like Goat Simulator or something, but the title looks uh, just like a throwback Tony Hawk game. Um, very simple visual style. In fact, it looked real empty, so maybe they're still working on it. But uh, Skater XL by Easy Day Studios looks like a title to definitely keep your eyes peeled for next year. Then we get Urops by Freakle, Free Cell, Freckle, something like that, coming out also next year. It's a 3D puzzle platformer where you're this little cute white spongy dude and you're traversing environments, defying gravity to get to the other side of the level in this like post apocalyptic world where everything's just kind of desolate but floating up in the air. It has a lot of mechanics you would see from Little Big Planet or Minecraft, where you can paint the character, add items to the world, build or craft or tear things down, but it's all live as you're playing the game. So instead of kind of going into build mode or play mode, like a little big planet, you're doing that as you work through the game. And then we finally get Super Hot by the Super Hot team. If you haven't seen Super Hot, it is a first person shooter that has an extremely low poly, like three or four color visual style where you're kind of running through levels as if you're uh, in the Matrix, you're Neo, or you're John Wick, <laughs> or I guess any other Keanu Reeves <laughs> movie where he's running around shooting like a badass. But the, the catch here is that the world only moves as you move. So if you stand still, everything's frozen. And so that gives you enough time to like jump off of tables and kick guns out of bad guys' hands and do backflips and dodge bullets and all kinds of cool stuff. If you haven't played Super Hot, you owe it to yourself to pick up this game and it launches today. And then we get another sequel to a great indie title. We get the new Dungeon Defenders Awakened by Chromatic Games. Not launching until February of next year, but Dungeon Defenders and its sequel are really fun top-down action RPGs where you can play with multiple players, and it's a tower defense game, but you are actually one of the peons running around setting up the traps and fighting off the enemies, so it plays much more like an engaging, live, action-oriented game, more so than what you would traditionally see from tower defense games. And then we get The Tourist. Now, this has a Y instead of an I, the Tour Yeast <laughs> by Shinen Games, and it launches in November. This game has a 3D pixel art. It's like 3D, but in a 2D world. Think of like 3D Dot Game Heroes or Octopath Traveler, where you've got this gorgeous, real type looking world, but all the characters are um, large pixels. And so it's, it's really cute, but it's really retro throwback, but also not in the way that it's old looking. It's just old characters in a gorgeous real life world, if that makes sense. You're this little dude on a vacation in like a Hawaiian island type theme. Like he's got the Hawaiian shirt on and all that kind of stuff. But then in the game, you're doing things like living out his vacation, going to the shops and finding clothes and running uh, different errands. But then you can go down into dungeons where you're going to solve puzzles and fight off enemies and do all the things that one would do inside of said dungeon. It looks like a really fun game and it comes out this November. And then we get Skellboy by Fabraz launching December 3rd. So one to put on your Christmas list, friends. This is a hilarious looking game that also has that realistic yet 3D pixel art style. I need a good name for those kind of games, but I can't really think of one. If you can think of one, let me know in the comments or let me know on Twitter at NindyJeff or at NindyNation. 
But anyways, this is another hack and slash RPG with lots of platforming and all of that. The hook here is that the main character, Scale Boy, instead of changing out different uh, abilities and weapons and equipment, you are swapping out body parts from the enemies that you tackle. And it's done so in a really funny way. So it's not a gory game or anything like that. This game could be a lot of fun, but we'll see on December 3rd. We also have Earth Knight by Cleaversoft launching sometime later this year. In this pseudo yucky gross art style the world has been taken over by dragons and you are one of multiple playable characters who have to go down to earth and try to save the planet from these dragons and the way you do so is you start each run or each level by diving off of a flying dragon and soaring down into the earth. So think about pilot wings or those games where you're skydiving. It looks like that. You're soaring down through the clouds and shooting enemies on your way down. And once you get to the ground, it turns into a side-scrolling uh endless runner, something like the runner series or bit trip runner where it's moving really fast and you're jumping, dodging, you know, trying to keep your momentum going forward. So it blends two different kinds of games. You've got these really cool third person flying sequences, and then you've got these really fast paced 2D runners. Uh, this game looks amazing. This is probably one of the biggest surprises that I'm really excited about. And then we get a long-awaited game by Donation Games and Devolver. Launching today is the Hotline Miami Collection. If you haven't played Hotline Miami 1 or 2, these are top-down type of clear the room as fast as possible, but going for a perfection run at the same time. Um, these are the games that really invented this genre, and if you are a score chaser, or you love high-paced action, or you want to play a game that's over-the-top violent, while also having, a, having an interesting message to it, you got to pick up the Hotline Miami collection. I don't know how much this game is. As of time of recording, it hasn't updated on the eShop yet, but I do very much look forward to playing the Hotline Miami collection and will absolutely be picking it up and do absolutely suggest you do the same as well. So those games look great. I mean, that was, what, 13 incredible-looking games. Almost all of them I am very interested in. But wait, there's a lot more. Right at the end, the announcers said, hey, we've got a little sizzle reel of a bunch of games coming out, so we're going to run through these a little quicker. But most of these are coming out in the fall. Many of them have dates, and there's even more of these titles. So let's dig into these. First, we have Blasphemous by Team 17 and The Game Kitchen. It launches September 26th, which is my wife's birthday, and is a Castlevania-like gothic action game. Then we get Close to the Sun by Wired Productions and Storm in a Teacup coming out sometime later this year. It's a first-person adventure with a mix of Bioshock-type storytelling and point-and-click adventure elements. And then, still not having a date, but coming out in the fall, we get Cat Quest 2! And by the Gentle Bros and published by PQ Limited, and I cannot wait to hack and slash my way through the world of Cat Quest 2. Then, in spring 2020, we get Spiritfarer by Thunder Lotus. It looks a lot like a children's storybook with watercolor visuals and follows a story about a girl and her little wolf magic companion thing and uh, seems to be a 2D adventure, but the trailer uh, left a lot to be answered. Then we get, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, we'd be talking about this game in perpetuity. <laughs> On October 8th, we get Trine for the Nightmare Prince. 
Uh, it's a 2D action adventure platformer puzzle game, just like basically everything you could do in a 2D style game. Lots of fantasy medieval type elements with lots of magic and swords and shields and armor and all that good stuff. But this time it adds a two player mechanic with even prettier visuals. And I, I'm pretty sure the co-op is a first for the series. Then we get the previously announced Creature in the Well by Flight School Studios on September 6th, so just around the corner. This is the game that carries a very similar art style to Hyper Light Drifter, top-down hack and slash, but you are living inside of gigantic pinball-type games where your goal inside the levels is to defeat enemies or open doors or solve puzzles by hitting pinball type items out in the field to progress through the world. It's very unique, looks very fun, and launches right around the corner. Then we get One Finger Death Punch 2 by Silver Dollar Games on December 2nd. This is a very fast-paced and exciting over-the-top 2D action combat game where all of the combat is done by way of a rhythm game where you're watching sequences and button prompts show up at the bottom of the screen. Best Friend Forever launches on, aw, Valentine's Day 2020 and is published and developed by Star Colt and Alliance, respectively. It looks like any of the first person story games where, frankly, we talk about all the like girlfriend simulator stuff that is always launching on the eShop. However, this one's about dogs. And so you are going to raise your dog and play with your dog and get clothes for it and keep it clean and meet new dogs almost like Nintendo's own Nintendogs series, but this one, instead of a simulator of doing the actions, it's much more story and conversation um, driven. So we'll see how that looks when it launches next Valentine's Day. Then we get Fogs, P-H-O-G-S, with an exclamation mark, by Bitloom Games and published by Coatsing, coming out early next year. It's another dog game, but this one is a multi-perspective puzzle platformer where you're, <laughs> it's kind of like you're two different dogs that are attached to each other by like a big snake. So picture like a long worm with a dog head at each side. And so I'm getting a lot of uh, snake pass vibes from this. You've got to work your way through tons of physics puzzles while you know, swinging yourself around, work using your momentum, and you can grab essentially with both ends of said snake dog head thing. We'll see how that uh, pans out early next year. Then we get one that I am actually excited for this winter, What the Golf by Triband. If you look at the game, it basically looks like any type of golf game, but the difference here is only the first level are you actually using a golf club to hit a golf ball. Otherwise, it's uh, basically physics puzzles where you swing. <laughs> there's, there's one video that I love where as soon as you go to swing the club, instead of swinging the club, the golfer himself goes flying towards the goal. And so like I've seen levels where you uh, drive a car to hit a beach ball or you are a dog that is chasing a cat to the goal. It plays like a golf game, but in reality, it's one of those funny physics type puzzle games. Then we get Kine, K-I-N-E, by Chump Squad, developed by Gwen Gray sometime later this year. It's a grid-based puzzle game based on a lot of music and elements with a gothic Nightmare Before Christmas art style to it. And then Hypercharge Unboxed by Digital Cyber Cherries Limited also comes out later this year. It's basically the Toy Commando, or if you remember any of those kind of games where you're the little, your, your toys inside of a kid's room or in a backyard, but it plays out like a much more serious looking first person shooter. Basically, imagine yourself as one of your G.I. Joes. They all come to life and you've got to battle it out with all of the other toys in Andy's backyard, as it were. 
also releasing on September 26th is Northgard by Shiro Games. It is an RTS with hack and slash elements and tower defense stuff set in medieval times. Then later this fall, we get Sparklight, developed by Red Blue Games and published by Merge Games. It's a 16-bit action RPG set in a fantasy slash steampunk world that looks awesome. I'm currently playing through CrossCode on PC, which is going to eventually come to st- uh, come to Switch, but it looks a lot like that. Uh, watch the video if you want to see more about it. And then we get Munchkin Quacked Quest by Asmodee Digital and Lucky Hammer, launching later this fall. It's half card-based battler, think Hearthstone, and half hack and slash RPG. So we'll see how those two things merge together when it launches later this year. And then we got one more thing. And ladies and gentlemen, all of the rumors were true. Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, developed by Moon Games and published by Xbox Game Studios, is the third independently developed game published by Xbox to launch on the Switch, and it's coming September 27th. It is one of the most beautiful 2D Metroidvania games you've ever seen. It's very difficult and is very, very critically acclaimed. Um, I think everybody should take a look at this game. If you do have an Xbox, it's been free many times because it's a few years old now. But I'm excited to see how well they can make this game run on the Switch because it is gorgeous. And uh, very exciting to see all of these indie games and games in general come from Xbox Game Studios. It's been a long time coming, and we're really starting to see the fruits of the labor for these two massive publishers, game studios, you know, platform developers, whatever you want to call Nintendo and Microsoft, working together for the gamers. And that's it for today's Indie World presentation. 29 exciting games coming up to keep your Joy-Cons synced. What did you think? Are you excited? I'm excited. We've got a lot of games to play over the next few months. Tell me what you're excited about and what you're going to be looking for as soon as it launches on the eShop. You can talk to me on Twitter at NindyJeff. You can talk to the podcast group at Nindy Nation. And until next time, guys... Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment, chat with us on social media, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, keep playing the Nindies and keep those Joy-Cons synced.